and welcome to another video from Hegarty Maths. It's Mr Hegarty here and it's our fourth video on core two differentiation. Now this is going to be a tricky video. It relies on you knowing videos one to three on core two very well and being very skilled on your core one differentiation. When you first watch this video we're going to go through two difficult examples. Um, as you do more of these style of questions, as you do exam questions, these uh, these style of questions will make more and more sense to you and you'll start getting more and more familiar. It's really applying differentiation, but the difficulty students find is um, it's worded problems and you have to know some formulae for uh, volumes of shapes and etc. So we're going to go through the two examples, but I'm going to be really clear on what are the differentiation skills and the more you do these, the better you'll get. So. Just before I do that, it's really important we understand everything that we've done up to this point. Now, what does differentiation do, first of all? Ask yourself that question. You should know that. Differentiation finds the gradient of a point, uh, sorry, of a curve at a point, at a given point. Okay, and the gradient of a, of a point, of a curve at a point is defined as the gradient of the tangent um, to the curve at that point. So say we had some sort of um, graph here, or curve. If we differentiated at say x is five, and we substitute x is five, it would be working out the gradient of the curve at the point x is 5. Now, what have we learned in core 2 that can be really useful to help us do? Well, it can help you, one, identify where a curve is increasing or decreasing, increasing or decreasing. Okay, but that's going to be less useful in this section. But the big, big thing it helps you do is it helps you identify turning points. Now, what's a turning point? A turning point is where the gradient is zero. So it's where the gradient is zero. Okay. And how does it help you do that? What do you have to do in order to be able to do that? Well, what you have to be able to do, the thing you're always trying to solve, you are solving your gradient function dy by dx is equal to zero. And what that gives you, it gives you the x value where the gradient is zero. And this is called a turning point, this here, is a turning point. It helps you find where the turning point is, the x value of where the turning point is. To find the y, you put the x back into the original function. So that's what it does. It finds you the turning point. And you have to be able to classify the turning point. The turning point can be three things. It can either be a maximum, a local maximum, so I'm going to put local here, that means just in the region, or it can be a local minimum, or what else can it be? It can be a, it can be a point of inflection. And the main way we identify these, how would we identify these? Well, for a maximum, obviously you have dy by dx is zero, because that's what you solve to find it, but you have the second derivative, dy by uh, d2y by dx squared, when you substitute the x value in, you would have that as negative. And what would you have for a local minimum? Well, you'd have dy by dx equals zero, and you'd have the second derivative positive. They're the main things we're gonna find. Here, if you find that dy by dx is equal to zero, the second derivative, uh, if, if that is also equal to zero, the only other case that could be is equal to zero. It doesn't tell you it's a point of inflection. You would have to go and investigate, uh, investigate like video one, where you look slightly to the left 
a next value slightly to, to left and slightly to the right and draw some pictures like that. If you get a negative gradient, zero gradient positive, you've got a minimum. And if you get a positive gradient, zero negative gradient, you would have a max. So that is the first three videos basically summarized up and that's what we were going to need, the skills we're going to need. Right, let's jump into the first example. It's straight into context. Okay, these questions are wordy and there seems like there's lots of parts to them, so they can be quite daunting. But I want to break down for you uh, where the easy marks lie and where the difficult uh, section lies. So just let's explain the question first. The diagram shows the minor sector OMM of a circle. So the minor sector just means the small sector of the circle as opposed to the bigger sector, the major sector from which uh, is left over when you cut out a sector. So we don't have to worry too much about that other than the fact that OMN is a part of a circle and it's got center O and radius equal to R. So the radius here is on the diagram. That is clearly the radius there as well. It tells us some facts. It says that the perimeter of the whole sector is 100 centimeters. It tells us the area of the sector is just A, so it doesn't give us a value. And it asks us for part A to show A is equal to this here. Now generally, they can be the most tricky part of the question for the students to uh, make those connections there. It is doable and I will show you how to do it, but at first students find that hard. However, look at the rest of it. If you have your formula for A, which is given here, you have to show in part A, part A, a formula for the capital A, the area. The rest is just a differentiation problem. It says, given that R varies, so this is just like a formula Y in terms of X. It could be, it could just be the exact same as this thing here, let's say. Given that X varies, you could say, find the value of X for which Y is a maximum and show that Y is a maximum. You could just, it's the exact same problem with A's and R's as it usually is with uh, Y's and X's. So here we're just basically trying to find the maximum. And we have to show it's a maximum using the second derivative. Then we have to find the area, the maximum area. Well, if we found the, say if this was the equation, if we found the X value here, then we would substitute that in to find Y. Here, if we found the Y, uh, we're going to substitute in to get A. And then it says, uh, oh, the value of, of the angle, we're going to find the value of the angle there. And lastly, we're going to find the value of the area. So it's a differentiation problem. Let's start and go into part A. Now for part A, on um, chapter six in the book on radians and measure. If you haven't done it, that's fine. I'm just going to state the formulae that you should know from this. Now, when you're dealing with sectors of circles, there's two for uh, there's two formulae that you um, need uh, and you will learn. So it's, it's, if you don't know these, it's fine. You will learn these once you've done chapter six. You always have to know the angle here, and the angle is measured in units, not degrees in a level, but something called radians. You don't don't worry too much about this yet. If you've done chapter six, you'll know this all already, and we know uh, two main formulae from that chapter. Two formulae we're supposed to know. We're supposed to know what that length is there. And that length there, we usually call S, right? S is the arc length, is always given by R, the radius multiplied by the angle in radians. That's a formula that you just know. The other formula that you know is you also know how to work out the area of a sector using the angle in radians and the area of a sector is always equal to a half theta r squared or a half r squared theta. Okay, so there are two formulae which you know from chapter six of core two. Now they're asking us to find a. Well, what they're asking us to do is find a in terms of r. They're asking us to find a formula for A in terms of R only. We've got a formula for A with R's in it, but we've got this theta. But they've also given us a fact about the perimeter, so we can use that. Let's think about what the perimeter of the shape is. The perimeter of this shape is the arc length, this thing here, which we know is given by R theta for sure, plus a radius, plus another radius, so plus 2R. 
So we have one formula here, I'll call it formula 1, and we've got another formula here for A, which I'll call formula 2. And all I need to do is, um, uh, well, actually, in fact, I'll do one other thing. They've actually told us that the value of um, this is equal to 100. So I can say that 100 is equal to that. Now, all I need to do is uh, eliminate theta in here, and then I will have an A with just R's in it. So from equation 1, you can see that 100 subtract 2R must be equal to R theta. I'm trying to make theta the subject. And then keep going, divide by R. I would get that theta is equal to 100 subtract 2R all divided by R. And I could sub this in, sub, I'll call this equation 3, sub 3 in 2 here. And I will say that therefore A is equal to 1 half. Instead of theta, I'm going to write 100 subtract 2R over R. And don't forget to multiply by your R squared. Now some cancellation can happen here. Um, there's an R dividing on the bottom and there's an R multiplying on top. So you can cancel there. And then we could multiply that out. A is equal to a half. And we'd have, um, if we multiply this and this by R, I'd have 100R subtract 2R squared. And then I could multiply in by the half here. And I would have A is equal to 50R subtract, a half times 2 is 1, so just simply R squared. And that's exactly what they've asked us for in the question. Move on to the easier bits now, in my opinion, the easier bits, knowing that formula there. It says, given R varies, find the value of R for which A is a maximum. So we know that A is equal to 50 R subtract R squared. To find the maximum, we're going to solve dA by dR equals zero to find a maximum. That's always what you do. Okay, in the same way you solve dy by dx is zero to find the maximum for the curve y. So let's work out dA by dr. dA by dr, actually I'm just going to just move that down. I should have just straight away uh, worked out dA by dr. dA by dr, remember there's a power of 1 there. Bring down the 1, reduce the power, it's going to be 50 subtract 2r. So we're going to solve 50 subtract 2r is equal to 0. Add 2r to both sides, 50 is equal to 2r. Divide both sides by 2 and you get r is equal to 25. So the value of r, which a is a maximum. Now we have found that for part b. I suppose we have to show it's a maximum. To show it's a maximum, you work out the second derivative. So you're going to work out d2a by dr squared. You get a mark for working that out. If you differentiate a number at 0, if you differentiate that, you get negative 2. As it's since, uh, we can just write since, since d2a uh, by dr squared is less than 0, we have a maximum. So we've shown it's a maximum, and we have found the value of r uh, at which it's a maximum. So we've done those two parts. Then it asks for the value of the angle OMN, which we've previously called theta, for this maximum area. So for part C, we know we found that R is 25 at the maximum for the maximum area, haven't we? And if we carefully look back at our work, we have previously found a formula for R, uh, theta. Look here, theta in terms of r, we've got a formula for theta in terms of r. Theta is 100 subtract 2r over r. So we know that a formula for theta is 100 subtract 2r all over r. So the value of theta for r, when r is 25, theta is equal to 100 subtract 2 multiplied by 25, all divided by 25 and theta is going to equal 2, and our measure is radians, for that. So for this part, rather than, you could look back above and try and look here and look here, I would just look back at all my previous work and then try and find the formula of theta in terms of r, because r is the thing I found.
Okay, the last thing I have to do is I'm going to have to find the maximum area of OMN. Now the maximum area, remember we've got that the area in this formula up here is equal to 50 R subtract R squared. We've got a formula for A in terms of R. So when R equals 25, A is going to equal to 50 multiplied by 25 subtract 25 squared like that. And we're going to get ourselves that the area is equal to 625. It was all in centimetres, so we're going to write centimetres squared. And we're done for this question. Okay, I'm actually going to stop there after this one example. And I'm going to do another example of applying differentiation in a second video, because this video has already gone on quite long. So take your time working through this and make sure you understand. Come back for the second video for another example.